Hey there, this is Neil Napier and in this video I'll be breaking down what kind of content is working for us on YouTube and what kind of content is not. Now this is only comparing all the statistics from the 1st of January till May 7th which is uh, when I'm recording this video is actually on May 9th but this is showing me details till May 7th. So I'll talk about that. There are a lot of videos here with uh, a lot of different places where traffic is coming from. I won't go there though. What I want to focus on today is where are we getting, you know, what videos are getting most amount of views and what kind of videos are working and what kind of videos are not. Are not. So what I will also do is I will break it down into simpler numbers so that we can kind of compare here what kind of videos are getting most views, most watch time and what's the average view percentage as well. Now to me, from what I've understood, the watch time that a video gets is very important because the more watch time your videos get, the more people will see it. it. It's a snowball effect. So that's why they recommend doing videos that are eight minutes or 10 minutes plus long. Because if you have those kind of videos, when someone watches it, YouTube sees it and says, okay, this video is getting a lot of views. Let's focus more on that. So longer videos actually work really well. But of course the problem is if you've got a long video, maybe no one's actually going to sit all the way through and watch it. So these statistics will help us figure it out. We have done over 50 videos so far in the entire year from on our YouTube channel. And it's, it's a very new channel. I mean, we started in February. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you which kind of content work best. So I have divided into five different pieces, webinar replay, sales videos, training videos, where I just talk about theories and concept, training videos where I talk about systems with actual proof, and then the how-to training videos. Now let me first explain why we've got these 33 videos or so here. I took videos into consideration only if they had more than 100 views. Anything below 100 views, I just skipped it. Now we get a lot of views from our email list, we get a lot of views from our Facebook group. There are organic views as well, but m majority of our traffic for now comes from these user base, this user base, right? So statistics are a little bit skewed in that sense that we only, we get a lot of inflated numbers when we mail our customers about it. The more evergreen some links are, the more traffic they get, which is why I also want to look at average view percentage because I want to see, you know, if a video is getting a lot of engagement just by itself or not, right? So I've got this 33 videos over here. I haven't done too many training videos with system with proof just because I like to keep a lot of my systems close to my chest. I only reveal something where I know it's going to be highly beneficial to Kyvians, to people who use Kyvio. That's when I release systems with proof. When it comes to uh, theory and concepts, for example. I mean, there are so many I can happily talk about them because there's always a theory behind something that we do and I'm, I'm very open about those things. Then the how-to videos. Now, typically I reserve them for knowledge base. We do how-tos in a more text and image kind of format. That's why you don't see a lot of how-to videos in these top 33 videos that we have. We've got a lot of webinar replays and you'll kind of see most of them up on top and that's because I do, I run a webinar series every week. So I do it for like eight weeks every quarter and then we put it up on, on YouTube afterwards. So I'll explain about that as well, why it's so front heavy over there. Uh, I think this is arranged by watch time at the moment. Uh, yes. Then we've also got the sales videos. Now I don't put a lot of sales videos publicly on YouTube. A lot of people do affiliate review videos. We could consider that as well, but I focus more on delivering value with our own products, our own services. Sometimes they're affiliate promotions, but most of the time we try and do things ourselves. Now, let's look at this and let me show you exactly what kind of content converted well, what kind of content got a lot of views, what kind of content got a lot of retention as well. So let's focus on that now. Okay, some minor adjustment here. This is actually a sales video. I forgot about that. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, look at all these videos. Remember, I haven't done any optimization here. So the, all the stats that you see are from mostly our audience and then some audience that finds us on Facebook. Now, just to show you this, let's uh, look at, let's rearrange this based on video length. So the webinars have a long 
video length. This is kind of a sales video and a webinar, but let's call it actually, for lack of a better word, webinar replay because it, it is actually a webinar replay. So our webinar replays are the longest ones, as you can see. Uh, we've got how-to videos here as well, but then a lot of these theories and concepts videos are not too long. They're about you know two minutes to five minutes or so, right? They could be longer. I, I typically aim for above 10 minutes per video, but that's how it goes. Then if I arrange them by, let's say, watch time, There we have, again, webinar replays have the, the biggest watch time and that's because they are long and you know, it's something that most people kind of have to and want to watch and that's why that goes up. So if you look at this one, for example, this is the, the, the first webinar that we do in the series, which is why everyone who at least starts with Kaivio goes through this in the beginning. That's why their watch time is really high. I mean, it's almost four times, almost five times the next video which is a second in the series. Then you've got three and four here. Uh, five's down here, but you've got six over here. But this is more of an update video on our roadmap. And we got a lot of views for this one because a lot of people wanted to see where we are at with things and where we're going. So even though it's not super long, it got a lot of views as well. So this is just to kind of give you some idea of the top videos. This one's a little bit different. It was a controversial video, actually. The first one we put out it got a lot of traction from our from our audience, but even the other network that we were talking about, it got traction from that network as well. You know, those customers were coming on and kind of bad mouthing me because I was reviewing a competition. So we got a bit of flack for that, but we got a lot of views as well. And I think the concept of video was well founded. This video has done really well for us. Stop selling products, sell this instead. And we're actually converting into a blog post now because I talked about what a lot of people saw as a groundbreaking concept to show them how they need to change the way they position their products. So that gives you a bit of insight into watch times. Views would be quite similar if I just rearrange this one. Let's uh, do that now. Okay, in terms of view, you can see this video, stop selling products, sell this instead, got a lot of views as well. But again, watch time wise, it was number seven or eight, right? Same with this one, it got a lot of views, but watch time wise, it was low because it's not a long video. Check out this one. This one got a lot of views as well. I mean, it's number five so far in terms of number of views, but it's only five minutes long. That's why the watch time is quite low, right? So let's kind of start breaking it down. I'm gonna, to, to kind of keep things uh, clear, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take top three results for any of these, right? So we've got feature releases as well, which is like an additional category, but let's go for webinar replay first. So for webinar replay, let's rearrange by watch time. All right, so if I take the top three, webinar replays on an average have 9,365 minutes of watch time, right? So 9,365 minutes of watch time. Then we've got right here, sales videos. There are only three. Sales videos have a watch time of about, on average, 856. So it is much, much less, as you can see. Training videos, theories and concepts. So if I go for uh, training videos, theories, and concepts. Then the top three have a watch time collectively of 2029. So 2029. Then if you go for training videos and with systems and proof. So let's go for training video systems and proof. They have collectively on average a watch time of 855. So if I go here, let's go put 855 right over here. Just very close to sales videos, right? Uh, then the training videos, how to. So let's go for training videos, how to. They have a watch time of about 1156 on average. So if I was to pick the best one, and I ask this question in our Facebook group for people to vote, the webinar replays have the best one, best watch time. And uh, then we've got the let's say training video systems with proof somehow or even sales videos i would argue they are neck and neck i'm going to turn them both into red and make them bold as well so they get the least amount of watch time which is understandable i mean with sales videos interesting right because we do drive a lot of traffic to them but they just don't get a lot of watch time so then let's 
look at all of them again and now I want to compare the average percentage view because for me this is important I want to see how engaged a particular video is right and if I rearrange the whole list based on that let's go ahead and do that you'll see that even shorter videos right over here have like really high engagement numbers right which is I think it's a good thing I think it's a good thing that people are liking that but let's go ahead and start drilling down again one by one so we'll start with webinar replay and again the question is should I measure engagement for the most watched time or should I measure the engagement of the best videos there is I think I'll go for the most watched time because that's really you know what what YouTube cares about right so that's more important so let's do that and okay so the top three videos over here as you can see have an average engagement of 18.85 percent on webinars so if I record an hour long webinar on a replay maybe people only watch about 12 minutes or so 10 12 minutes on average right that's that doesn't mean they only watch 10 12 minutes at the beginning but overall they can't spend too much time on it so maybe you know there's something to be learned there we'll come to lessons in a little bit so let's go look at the sales video and again we've got only three videos here so our sample size is small but for sales video the engagement's higher it's 30.23 percent right the sales video engagement is definitely higher uh, let's look at then uh, we'll check out theory and concepts and again let's arrange them by watch time okay Theories and concepts get an enge average engagement of about 33.8%, which is pretty cool, right? So 33.80%. Ah, 33.8. Okay, well, yeah, it does that. All right, then let's check out systems with proof. So if I go back here, I'll go for systems with proof. And let's rearrange them again. And our top three right here get about 39.25. 39.25. And then training videos how to. Let's go ahead and check them out as well. Okay, let's rearrange them by watch time. And the top three here get about 37.89. 37.89. So the best one here really we're looking at is systems with proof. Let's go ahead and color code this as well. Okay, and the worst one is the webinar replays. Now, let's look at this one in a bit more depth. Okay. Should have done that from the beginning. All right, so we've got on average webinar replays get the most watched time, but in terms of the average view rate, it's really low. So what my biggest takeaway from this is that maybe if I'm doing webinars, I should also link people to a checklist underneath. I mean, I know they're watching a lot of this. I, I totally get that. But, you know, if I give them a checklist, then at least I can still capture people who are not fully engaged on the webinar at that time. I can maybe find other ways of bringing them back to the webinar. That's something I can do. Uh, if I look at sales videos, for example, they clearly have very low view time, watch time, which is understandable because like I said, I haven't done too many sales videos on YouTube yet. So the sample size is small, but the average view is relatively good. You know, it's it's the second lowest, but it's it's all right. So maybe what that tells me is that sales videos could be more engaging and should they be long should they be small uh, shorter i don't know yet i think that's a little bit of unknown for me because the sample size was so small then when i think about training videos with theories and concepts a lot of watch time like definitely i guess because there have been a lot of uh, videos but on average even uh, the videos that have worked have gotten a lot of watch time so that's good average view percentage is good as well but this is kind of in the middle it's it's like the the par for the course it's the average right when i then look at training videos which have systems with proof I mean the watch time is really low maybe that's because the training videos are short as well which kind of just is justified here that the average view percentage is much higher 
So people actually do care more about training videos which have systems with proof in it, right? I could, like I said, look at some more data here to be, for it to be fully statistically valid, I would say. So I think, yeah, this is a good stat to, to notice as well. Average view duration, right? Which gives us this number. So yeah, I think generally these videos are pretty good. They get really good engagement, it looks like. Well, I say engagement, you know, but they get good, a lot of average views, which is nice. Maybe I should have a stronger call to action here for people to buy something or for people to subscribe. And then also training videos, how to people do like those. They get a lot of uh, average views as well, percentage, which means that a lot of people watch those. So take the statistics as you will. Tell me in the comments below if I should include some other statistics here for it to be really viable case study. And I'm, I'm happy to kind of redo this with more insights if you think something else should, is missing and it should be added back in. But to me, some lessons are clear. With the webinar replays, give people an additional thing that they can also refer to if they can't watch the entire webinar, which is happening. And for training videos where we give systems with proof, it's okay to pitch something because people are watching it, people are engaged, they are watching more of it because they're getting a system out of it, they're getting some results out of it. So it's okay to maybe pitch something there, turn that into a little bit of sales video. That's what I think anyway. Tell me what you think, if you disagree, if you agree, I'd love to know uh, your thoughts on it.